everyone, I'm Amps, an admin for the Nindum, and this is our Nindum Top 10 series. I will explain how the Top 10 series and the channel on our Discord server will work. Every Tuesday on Nims' Twitch channel, we go over units that viewers have submitted on stream, and we usually end it off with the Nindum Top 10 Heroes. In order to have a chance at being selected as a Nindum Top 10 Hero, you must be part of our Discord and you have to submit your hero to the hashtag Hero Reviews channel. As it stands right now, you may submit as many heroes as you like. Just be sure to include your friend code or specify that you're already on Nims' friends list. If you would like, you can also specify if the build is for more focused for a certain game mode like Arena or Ether Raids. Our Heroes Review staff will only pick one of your heroes to be featured, meaning if you submit two or more heroes, only one of them can make it. Uh, how the channel works is that it will open on Tuesday's reset, which is 12 a.m. PST, 3 a.m. EST. The channel will stay open until Saturday's reset, which is also 12 a.m. PST and 3 a.m. EST. And after this time period, the channel will no longer be accepting more submissions, and the Heroes Review team will be looking over heroes to be featured on the stream on Tuesday. Eh, these builds all look pretty meh. Except for that Black Knight, I want him. If your hero is chosen to be featured as an in them top 10, one of the Hero Review staff members will contact you on Saturday or Sunday. And you'll have until Monday's reset, which is 12 a.m. PST, 3 a.m. EST, to contact them back. Otherwise, your hero may not be featured. The channel will then open up again on Tuesday at 12 a.m. PST, 3 a.m. EST, and the cycle will reset, and it'll just be as is. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically how the channel works. If you have any more questions, you can uh, ask me on the Discord server, or you could talk to one of the Hero Review staff members. Anyways, here are the heroes for this week. Damn. Oh my god, they all were. Yeah. Alright, tier 19, retro. Okay. A plus 6 Tobin. Impressive. I have never seen a plus 6 Tobin because I think... Wait, was Tobin a fan favorite? I don't even know. I don't think so. I don't I mean, think no, 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 it's been a while since I've been on one of these streams. I think he's really strong, Just a question. But... Are we still allowed to fill the cup with some big spam? Yeah, can know. we? A absolutely. If you want to fill up, I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, dude. I'll come back. But yeah, go on, guys. Okay, or not. Um, Tobin, 56 HP, 50 attack, 31 HP. Sorry, 31 speed. I've been seeing speed and HP today. I'm the lack of sleep. 36 defense, 32 res. That's really even across the board for um, speed, defense, res. Attack's not bad. HP's really, really high. So Barry Blade adds 7 res, so he reaches 39. Uh, reposition, Aether. Aether's just... I wonder if you use, use him in Arena. If you're tier 19, yeah, you definitely use him in Arena. Uh, Save Breath. So 40 defense, 39 res. Renewal to keep his sustain up, or his high HP up. Um, that's pretty useful. Depending on what you have the team set up with. If you have... Hmm. If you have Panic Ploy on him, I would have liked that a lot more. Because your HP is pretty ideal for it. Attack Smoke, though, that also makes a lot of sense. After one combat, you drop this attack on every everybody else. Further allowing him to save himself more. And then QR. Stag Breath, Renewal, QR. I still love, really, really love that combination. Alright, that's a super solid Tobin. Four flowers, too. So, yeah, why'd you guys pick this one? The big thing for me on this Tobin was exactly what you said at the beginning, Nim, and the fact that somebody actually went and made a very invested Tobin to me is very unique because normally, to most people, Tobin is basically either armor smasher fodder or he's a quick AA check for an armor such as Surtur or mm -hmm. another green armor. And to see a build on him like this really actually renews my faith in him, seeing that he actually has a lot of practical use. And really investing in him actually makes sense when you see a build like this. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, the only issue with this is I think it's so favoritism. You have to like Tobin, to use Tobin of all the characters. For red heroes, what do you think are some of the alternatives to Tobin? There's a lot of yeah. alternatives for Tobin. Just about every single red sword could technically be an alternative because most of them are in the three to four star or the five star pool. And I mean, the fact that somebody likes them this much, I definitely had to appreciate the dedication. Mm -hmm. 
so yeah, that, that's basically my thought as well. Um, technically, technically, you could do the same thing on, on other heroes and get better results. But I fully respect your dedication here. Say Breath Renewal, QR, with the fast ethers. This Tobin's deadly, and he, he can sustain himself really easily, stay in QR. So against physical heroes, dragons, he's going to do amazing. But yeah, good job, Retro. Still just so super surprised that it's a Tobin. <laughs>
Uh, for steady breath. For steady breath. Oh yeah, he did. I don't know. I killed him beforehand before his starter came out. Oh wow. And I just put it on the con. I just ran. I just ran lightning breath, steady breath. One of my greatest lightning. sadnesses in this game is to see both steady stance and steady breath on the same character. You don't need both. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Great Kana. Um, my personal build on him is super cheap, so I appreciate. I appreciate what you did, which is not super cheap, which is far, far more than I'm willing to pay for, that's for sure. <laughs> this is what Keep I did. Sure. So simple. He comes with raising defense res, guys. Alright. Um, to answer color grades, how does someone enter this contest again? It's not really a contest. You just put your hero in the Discord, into the hero view section, and then every every week, uh, to panel of a panel of biased, corrupt judges will pick out um, <laughs> 10 heroes from that. <laughs> and then they will notify you, and then you leave your hero out, and then every Tuesday I check them out. Uh, I'm still trying to make this time consistent, but again, today more things showed up. But yeah, every Tuesday we go over them on stream, and then they make it into the video format, and they come on the YouTube channel. So everyone, thousands of people can admire them. And seriously, guys, we've gotten... Hero reviews have averaged over 5,000 views. Um... Nimden Top 10 averages over 4,000 views. I guess Nimden Top 10 doesn't sound as good as hero views, but a lot of people see them. So if you really want to show off your heroes, this is a great way. Number 8 is JC's Erica. JC. I like how you guys put your names next to them. That's, that's cute. Okay. Are you guys ready for the fastest speaking spaniard in the world oh god <laughs> i was i was listening to an old hero review and i was just like this guy talks so fast he's talking like twice the speed of everyone else like three <laughs> times the speed of t this is amazing his brain is too large all right sacred stoner <laughs> oh my god yes it's a great name <laughs> what kind of okay and he has chicken on it, her head okay that's amazing. I, I'm i already impressed. I don't even need to see your hero. I love it. <laughs> Holy right, crap. Nice okay. God damn. Wait, really? 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 Okay. Really? Of all the IVs you could do, you went for plus defense. Really? Okay, I've never seen anyone go plus 10 Erica plus defense. I understand it, of course. You want balanced defense res, but still. Ugh, super boon and attack to take you to 51 would have also been really impressive. Extra speed would have been really helpful, but defense, interesting. Plus an Erica of 7 flowers. That's quite committed. With 51 HP, 47 attack, 41 speed, 35 defense, 33 res, solid all around. Here's the biggest thing that gets to me. You have Sigland. You also have bonus doubler. <laughs> um... That's some insane magnification of stats. All right, th for those who don't know how, how Ziggler works, it keeps this base effect of attack plus 4 to adjacent allies for one turn. But the biggest thing is, grants bonus to attack, speed, defense, res, equals the highest bonus on allies within two spaces during combat. AKA, if, for example, I had, like, home cavalry on whatever, and there's like, that, cav that cav here with the bonuses next to her, she gets plus 6 attack, plus 6 speed. And then for bonus doubler, so if she has a buff, those... Bonuses get doubled, so she can theoretically get plus 12 on everything? Plus 18. Plus 18, whoopsies. Yeah, yeah, because of her own base. Yeah, yeah, plus 18, you're right. An attack defense link, which also works with bonus doubler, because that counts as a buff. Res tactic, which you can buff on somebody else, and then Siglin buffs it back to you. Same with attack plus 4. Brazen attack res. Um, for more damage, for, and more for more res. Oh my god, that's pretty good. All right. All right, all right, Mr. Um, MC Normal Spaniard from America. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so the thing is, she has um, she has bonus doubler, so it really, really capitalizes on her role, which is to just stack buffs. And she has attack defense, which is a really, really reliable way to set them up. Like, And then she has rest tactics, so she, like, she can contribute to the team. Where, like, I don't know, it's just a really, really nice approach to Erica because she's, like, the best hero to use bonus doubler in that sense. Mm-hmm. I'm actually she like... Buffs. Yeah, go on. She triples buffs, and she has ether, so, like, she has some sort of, uh, some sort of sustain. It's really helpful overall. Mm-hmm. 
But did you figure out why they went for plus defense? I, I, it's it's so hard to not say go plus attack Erica because just that's that's a super boon. And yeah, plus attack. attack makes sense. The plus defense also makes sense for the fifty three effective defense she reaches. I guess you're right. But yeah, um, my personal stance on this is always go for plus attack Erica. Just if you can have a super boon and it's for attack. Almost always you should take it. Almost always. The only heroes I I think you might hesitate on that are for like Howie Murr because of her breath ability. But yeah, generally plus attack. Super boons, take it. I think defense is also super boon. That's why he won it. Oh, is it? Yeah, it is. Let me oh, check. Wow. Jesus. Okay. Um, I don't remember that because for Erica's her attack is so low, you always want to go for plus attack. All right, but that's probably the only thing I question in this entire build. Um, I get it, but here's the thing: 50, 50 defense versus fifty-three defense. If you ever think about it, it, it's such a minor difference. Whereas, the ability to attack to do four and another four extra, or is it? It could be 50, 50 defense versus fifty-four defense, or whatever it is. But yeah, you you guys get the idea. Anyways, that's that's my idea on it. Oh wait, crap! It's so long. <laughs> All right. Okay, I, I'm thoroughly impressed. Sacred Stoner, um, this is really cool. Also, you killed Roy, so that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Roy sucks. <laughs> I'm always surprised when I see bonus doubler on anybody because I'm like, how do you, how do you have it in yourself to sacrifice Roy? Because Roy not only has bonus doubler, he has one of the best swords in the game, in my opinion. DC with Falchion, that brings a lot of value in it. And then you also have um, human racism, and that's great. For <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Sub humans are evil. Okay, there we go. All right, everything's good. All okay. right, because you're about to check out Koro's Laszlo. What? How do you, you guys? There's a lot of random heroes. But I don't see Cubby coming. That's the point, Nim. Here's the thing. Has a Laszlo made the hero views every single week since inception? No, I don't think so. No, not really. Well, we Cause, haven't had a Laszlo. Because we. I think this is the first one. Yeah. Oh no no, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it, sorry, I think of hero the views. The first for top ten. Yeah, first for top ten. Hero views would keep getting Laszlo's. So I'm I'm yeah. super surprised by that. Coral tier sixteen, another barrier blade. Wow, you guys sure love that thing. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Okay. Um, 54 HP, 52 attack, 31 speed, 48 defense, 32 res. Uh, those are stat, stat lines I am not familiar with la for with Laszlo's. I either see really offensive Laszlo's or really defensive Laszlo's. Um, but this one, this one's going to res. So this is really, this is covered. Well, I see like pure defensive Laszlo's, not defense and res. 40 plus 10 is impressive, plus four dragon flowers. Barrier Blade adds another 7 res. The Fortress Defense res. You can you can offer up some of his attack for Fortress Defense res. I agree with that. And then you have Guard. Take away their specials. Speed Tactic. QR. Yeah, that's that's really, really solid. So, yeah, T, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, with this Laszlo, the first thing that really jumped out at me was the fact that he basically, like you said, I mean, he's not just a defense tank. He basically covers defense and res very, very well. And the fact that he also has guard and quick repose and actually still has a pretty respectable attack stat. Mm -hmm. He's a very strong and very able unit to be able to tank and deal back some pretty heavy damage. And plus he's Laszlo. You don't really see those too often unless apparently you're... In a hero view. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> apparently people really like Laszlo. I don't blame them. Nope. Oh. This person learned Fury 3 and did not even spend SP on it. Wow. That's dedication. For me, I just try and reach 50 attack. Um, against armors, that's no, no longer enough. But back in the day, when you reach 50 attack, and if you can double on something, that's usually enough to get the kill. Of course, against armors nowadays, that, that's, that doesn't work. But yeah, I can see the I can see logic there. Um, Aether, you're going to rely on Aether for the heavy, heavy armor heroes. But, here's the thing guys, he's not quite there where that's a problem. Tier 16, you don't fight those plus 10 armor heroes with, with like 50 defense, something ridiculous. 
But yeah, impressive for you to get plus 10. My, my question is, if you're 40 plus 10, how are you not making it to tier 20? There's so many of you guys like that with plus 10 heroes, but the tiers aren't there. There's some people that just really don't care about Arena, and I think you're starting to see more of those pop up. Yep, and that's really become impairment to me because last year, most of my viewers were tier 20 or tier 19 at the very least. Nowadays, uh, I don't think the people take this game competitively at all because I, I did a great job killing Arena, that's for sure. <laughs> Big Daddy! <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> tier 20, Navar, more like power creep. Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. I took it. Uh, okay. Plus 10 Navar. Holy shit. No flowers. Interesting. Usually, if you make it to plus 10 like that, you see flowers. With 50 HP, 52 attack, 45 speed, 27 defense, 28 res. So, Navar was always, always interesting in the fact that he had high HP, uh, mediocre attack, high speed, uh, mediocre defense, and res. So a lot of people just did life and death on him. That's what I used to see. So, but you, you went entirely different. You went somewhere else. You went to a different continent, actually. So Scarlet Sword, uh, special trigger cooldown minus one. At start one turn one, grant special cooldown count minus two. You can see the quicken pulse there, but you drop it by two. Um, reposition ether. Ether gets dropped down to four thanks to Scarlet Sword. And if it triggers, it'll just drop down to three. DC special spiral. So technically. You could drop it all the way all the way to one cooldown. And then you have infantry pulse, which makes a lot of sense because you have 50 HP. Unless I'm mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. And that's super interesting. If you drop if you get it to trigger one time. No, no, never mind, never mind. It's the at start turn one grounds cooldown special. No, it's just it's just to keep it at three. Oh uh, sometimes I make that mistake. Sorry guys. And then the point is everything every time he doubles ether procs since it's always too cool down. Yeah. So yeah, the explanation for you. Uh the person just explained it. Uh assuming yeah. they attack him and he he gets the double, he gets ether every round. Because mm -hmm. uh especially uh with the special spiral, it has the same basically the same effect, but every other round as the uh minus two quick post. So mm -hmm. it's just incredibly good nuking and um sustain. Along with uh, really good speed. The only problem with this build, only problem, the e when the ether hits, it's a second, it's a second shot. Yeah, that's the only issue. And the problem, with the second shot ether is, it usually doesn't do enough damage to heal enough. So that's the only flaw I can see in it. But this is I didn't like finishing them. So it, what do you mean? So if you did. So if they had 50 HP, right, and your first shot did 40 okay. damage, and your second uh, shot is the ether, you, okay. you don't you hardly heal. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. But to be fair, this is I think this is as good as it gets for for Navar. There's not much more you can do about it. It's super unfortunate because Navar has been absolutely power creeped at this point. I'm so sorry, dude. But Rutger <laughs> is better in every every place. Only thing Rutger doesn't have is an enhanced weapon yet, a personal weapon. But so yeah, this is this is what I would do if you were so into Navar, because this is the only thing that Rutger can't do. He doesn't have Scarlet Sword, so he can't pull this off. All right, but yeah, is there anything to add on it? Uh, not necessarily, other than just like the really good uh, special cooldown. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting they went for DC. Because I would have figured you would have just like maximum ma maximized himself up close, but still, even without the um, A skill boosting up his attack and speed, it's still really respectable at 52, 45. Um, yeah. I think the seal speed kind of pushes it because and initi initiate seal speed because you generally want another seal, but I I can see it too. Reaching 45 is really important if you want to use DC at tier 20. Yeah. After you checked out your big daddy, you're gonna check out uh, Rip Harambe's Shirshi. <laughs> Rip Harambe. Is that his actual name? That's, That's his Discord actual name. name. That is his Discord name, yes. Is Harambe still a meme that people mention? 
How old I is guess. this? How old is it again? It's like three years old. Three? Maybe. Holy <laughs> crap, I feel old. <laughs> it still feels like yesterday, guys, when young Nimius in university discovered Harambe. And not only discovered Harambe, he just discovered the Harambe fighting games. Because they made fighting games <laughs> involving Harambe. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was it was really weird. I still remember having debates with people on whether the uh, if, whether it was right or not. It wasn't right. <laughs> Stupid kid. It was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The gorilla was trying to look the negative. Yeah, the gorilla was doing. The <laughs> I was gonna say the gorilla was doing the right thing. <laughs> That's wrong. All right, Gorolog. Tier twenty. Um, 56 t plus 10 merges, 10 merges, 2 flowers, 56 HP, 58 attack, 24 speed, 36 defense, 20 res. Thank goodness. Oh. I was kind of scared we were going to see one of those special Shershis. By, by that I mean like, oh hey, it's Shershi. She's known for her high attack and slow speed. Let's turn it around. Let's give her high speed, low attack. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, no, I, I like this build. I think Shershi's Axe is absolutely perfect. In my opinion, it is still the perfect refine in the game. Um, even though it's... When they gave Shershi Shershi's Axe, it proved IS was paying attention, at least partially. Because Shershi's Axe is basically a bra an enhanced Brave Axe with 12 Might. Um, well, not 12 Might, but this guy did attack on Shershi's Axe. And then the, the initiate... Just, it's just basically a better Brave Axe. Uh, she normally comes with Hammer. And normally, um, that's a big deal because, you know, everyone transfers over Brave Axe on it. So, anyways, what I'm saying is, IS took a look at the meta and just realized, oh, almost everyone uses Brave Axe. We're going to give her Brave Axe. And then that was, like, the right move. I really hate it, like, refines, like, Takumi, where, oh, hey, we got the stupid movement thing. That doesn't help him at all. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> anyways, uh, but in terms of the full build... Shershi's Axe with Attack, that makes sense. Um, Shershi's Axe Special Refine is Panic Ploy. You don't necessarily need it. Not a lot of, not everyone runs it anymore, so it makes sense. 56 HP would have been perfect for it though. You're in tier 20. Uh, Surrey Sans QR and Drive Res Attack Defense Bond. That's actually super solid because that adds adds four defense for attack, another five defense, another five attack. And then you use QR, so a physical tank. Oh, okay. But yeah, bait, go ahead. I really like that. She's a physical tank, and she can initiate, so she's more than just the standard hit-and-run Shershi. She has, like, that duality. Mm -hmm. She's a really good baiter for uh, melee units, and I think she used to have a uh, bonfire, and that really, really helps her because she can bait things. She can't kill normally with two hits, mm -hmm. but she can actually kill them because she doesn't have to deal with close defense, steady stance for any of that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I like that, too. In my opinion, I would take Shershi over Baruka just because of the flexibility. Baruka is a much better tank, but she hasn't. She doesn't have the offensive ability as Shershi. But Shershi can pull off a build like this and be good defensively and good offensively. Yeah, yeah. And she has, she's also really good anti ranged because of that brave weapon. So she can just pretty much obliterate any Veronica, you know, any close counter unit. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I was looking for in the skill set was um. What was Gale Force? Because <laughs> she could technically do that. Technically. Because technically, it, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be as smooth as, say, with um, Kateria. But she could do it. Um, you, she also has... Wait a second. I'm kind of surprised. I'm hoping this person didn't kill Dorcas. Because I didn't see it. Oh, no. They killed Ephraim. They told me. Oh, Ephraim. Okay. <laughs> Because I would have been really sad if it was Dorcas, because you could have gotten the axe for sure. Alright, good job, Gorlog. Um, I do like the build. So, offensively, you just strike them twice, 58 times 2 should be enough to get the kill. Defensively, you add an additional 9 defense, reaching 45 defense, and you add 9 more attack. So, it'll also be 67 times 2. So, um, incredibly strong offensively, and then even more powerful defensively, apparently. So, yeah, good job. I'm wondering, for you guys, do you organize it into a top three, or you just go for whatever order? We focus on number one. Ah. Yeah, and number the rest are sort of... Fair enough. 
Yeah, this week I actually tried to make sure that I kept it relatively chronological. So as you can see, it's basically I speak, then Ryu speaks, then Bake speaks. So that way we kind of have a good system in place. Sure. Yeah, that, that's fine. Taco. Um, plus Sensei, 5 flowers, 47 HP, 55 attack, 43 speed, 39 defense, 39 res. Very solid defensively, very solid offensively, very solid everywhere, because it's Soleil and she's good at everything. <laughs> I've literally seen like every kind of build on Soleil. Oh. Alright, so Fortress defense res, you are you can of course afford to sacrifice 2 attack for having more defense and more res, which wasn't bad in the first place. Safeguard for even more res. Uh, close defense for even more res and more defense. Um, I guess this you're more afraid of fighting dragons. Makes sense. Dragons are everywhere at this point. Um, bonfire makes sense. Wrath makes sense. Fortified defense res wrath. That's really interesting. I don't see that a lot, but it makes a ton of sense, actually. The problem of wrath historically has been the fact that, sure, you can use wrath, but you can't take another hit. So if you don't one-shot them, you're dead. But the thing with Soleil is that, she actually can have the bulk, and you're seeing it right now. She has the bulk that, even if you're in wrath percentage, you can probably take that. You can take a hit, or even two hits, and then you're gonna hit them with the special, and then the hone attack four. That's hot. But yeah, T. Yeah, regarding this Soleil, the first thing that I picked up that I should probably point out is I think safeguard is for defense, not resistance. Oh, whoopsies. I'm so used to seeing the barrier blades today. <laughs> we just kept seeing barrier blades, barrier blades. My bad. You're right. Hey, it's, it's all good, brother. I just want to make sure I pointed that out to you. So that way people weren't trying to tear you apart on stream. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure they did. And it's so unfair. <laughs> it's the same stupid sword. It's just a different color. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just too used to it seeing it today. Yeah, it's all good. But anyway, pretty much everything you said is exactly how I feel about this. I mean... To be honest, this is the first time that I've seen a Soleil like this because every other Soleil that I've seen before this one had one goal and one goal only. Max out attack, max out speed, hit everything, obliterate, move on to next enemy. Yeah. This literally is built to do pretty much the complete opposite. It's supposed to sit there, take hits, obliterate whatever comes at it, and just pretty much wave its hand saying, who's next at that point? Mm -hmm. And with Wrath being able to charge and with the bulk, as you said, and her HP wouldn't be so low to the point where it would really be an issue. She would still have in the neighborhood of 70 to 80 physical bulk at that point and still roughly 70-ish uh, magical bulk. I would have to say that this build works extremely well and I can't say enough good things about it. This person really likes Soleil, steady breath. Here's the thing, guys. Soleil, she's going to become outdated eventually. And then eventually she's, she's gonna get a refine. <laughs> she'll be back. She'll be beyond relevant again. I mean, she'll always be relevant, but she's gonna. I can already see it now. Two years from now, she gets a refine. And everyone's gonna lose their mind. Yeah, it's probably gonna happen sooner rather than later. That's what they usually do with the out of date hero. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think there'll be Generation 4 BSD? Oh, absolutely. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, I, I figure that as well. Oh boy. And then everybody that killed five-star exclusive heroes for dual skills are going to be really upset. I'm not even sure if that's going to be a thing, but I, I know, like, it's the plausibility of it is. Because it feels like IS kind of wants to patch up all the heroes, but I'm not sure if they want to do that. Because if you, if you patch up all the heroes, the Generation 1 heroes will still just be irrelevant, you know? But yeah, I, I can see what you mean. Oh, oh yeah, it's only a matter of time. Uh, that's what Shannon's lance. That's a uh, teddy bear on her head. That's okay. And the the th the beautiful thing about Shanna is now that her sister is here. She she's gotten power creeps, but uh, she has her lance. So that's the best thing about her. What? Okay, it's another fortress defense res blade. <laughs> I'm super surprised. <laughs> how do you guys get all of these cliffs? And how do you like figure? Hey, let's kill all these cliffs. Cause that's pretty. That's pretty big, man. This is worth it. Cliff is a bad character. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh... Personality-wise, personality-wise. Oh, okay. Game-wise, he's pretty good. I mean, the personality of somebody who's supposed to be like be aloof, not as caring, kind of hard to pull off. Of. Anyways, plus ten, three flowers, forty-seven HP, forty-nine attack, forty speed, 
39 defense, 39 res, another defense Shanna. I'm so surprised by that. I think people are doing it to reach the even numbers. No offense, guys, but like, I, I really think that's a thing. Where uh, you reach the even number because, because OCD is a terrible thing. All right. Personally, I would go on for attack or speed. Uh, it makes more sense for me. Um, speed makes a lot more sense because I want Shanna's Lance to be activating as often as possible. So I need to guarantee the doubles. Um, but nowadays in tier 21, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, because everything you fight is armor. Uh, Mystic Boost. Uh, attack smoke, close defense. Whoever said that, whoever picked this one, go ahead and explain. Okay. I personally love this film. I love uh, Shanna's Lance. I think she got a really nice refine. Uh, I realize that Mystic Boost isn't actually is uh, the best on melee units, but having that plus six health every single fight helps us so much. It's like uh, Bake said it earlier. It's like uh, having six extra bulk, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the tax move. That's like essentially having. Uh, but 7 plus 6, 13 extra bulk every fight. Mm -hmm. Or after every fight. Mm -hmm. I see it. That's interesting use for Fortress Defense Res. Uh, of course, what you said about Mystic Boost makes sense. Attack Smoke makes sense. Close Defense makes sense. The only problem is this. This is 11 shadows of 11 Desperations. You're not, you're not even going to use Desperation one time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, that, gets, that kind of gets to me. Personally, I would have still gone for Desperation. I mean... The reason why I want to make Shanna plus 10 is just because, I mean, sorry, um, plus 5 stars is just because she already has Desperation. It would be very hard to build her. That's that's how I viewed it. This kind of reminds me a bit more of Tana because you're making her so defensive, but then you're still relying on Shanna's Lance, and you're using Bonfire of all skills, which is interesting because it should be Iceberg in my opinion, but when you're at 39 anyways, it doesn't really make a difference, but generally your natural res is higher. I would have done Iceberg, but yeah. Wait a second, she comes vice break. <laughs> oh, how special are you trying to be? <laughs> okay, you already had desperation, so the mystic boost bulk thing wasn't necessarily necessary. I mean, of course, there are advantages to keeping your HP higher instead of just being able to attack directly twice, but then there's advantages of being able to attack twice. Um, anyways. And then, and of course, Iceberg versus Bonfire. All right. Interesting. Chat. Shanna or Cadria? Take it how you will. Shanna. 100%. Really? Yeah. Shanna over Cadria, either or, Shigure. Uh, Teo, <laughs> Teo's not a choice. <laughs> Uh, Ests? God, you guys are terrible at this. Okay. Uh, Shigiri. Okay, I'm just gonna stop reading, alright? I I should've just said which blue fly, uh, blue fly you would take, because nobody listens to the stupid rules. Alright, I'd take Cadia, by the way. I love Cadia. Alright, this is a pretty big commitment, Shanna. Man. The worst part is I don't remember Shanna. Pretty sure. Pretty sure I, I can remember her in the game, but I can't remember anything about her. This is uh, weird. She had a different name in the other translation. That might be why. Oh, what's her translation? I believe it was Thanny. Something oh. Like that. I, need to read, I need to check that again. Okay. But yeah, they changed her name completely when they localized it. All right. Makes sense. Uh, Animal Blessing makes sense, too. Nervous Bard, four crowns. <laughs> the glasses work on everybody. Wait, that's Grail's axe. <laughs> that actually looks so cool, though. Does Grail's axe give you a different animation? I'm not even sure anymore. I don't think so. All right, but him like using like dropping the axe like that's so so cool. And those the the pumpkin with the red glasses. He looks so serious. Pumpkin Smasher, Dorcas, 40 plus 2, 2 flowers. Um, still looks as magnificent as ever. Still has no nipples. Do you guys remember when you first saw Halloween Dorcas? Did you think he was real? He... He didn't look right at all. 
He looked, he looked like tasty fodder to me. Well, no, I mean, the first time you saw his <laughs> image, fodder, I mean, yeah, everyone figured that eventually. When I first saw the picture of him, I was like, well, this is fan art. This is fan, there's no way. And then he came to me, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess. All right. So, into the build, 57 HP, uh, 58 attack, 29 speed, 20, 39 defense, 21 res. And here's the thing, I see what you're going for. Don't think you're slick, I see what you're going for. You went for a speed, Dorcas. Why? <laughs> this is actually so good. What the <laughs> heck? This is so good. All right, here's the thing. Faithful Axe, add plus uh, three to everything, and then you refine it for speed, so plus six to speed, while plus three to everything else. Um, all you have to do, drop an ally next to him, and depending on if that ally is supported or not, you can have one or two extra stats, um, depending on the spaces, I guess. Well, it has to be next to him, so two extra stats. So zero to two extra stats. Ignis, uh, that's fair. Steady posture, that's not really fair because you already come with a posture skill. I mean, a steady st skill, I mean. Um, whatever these skills are called. And a steady posture, add four speed for four defense. Nice. Bold fighter, so whenever you attack, your speed is irrelevant. I mean, you can still get doubled back, but sure, you generally kill them in two hits anyways. Speed smoke, as if... The speed... Okay, fine. Make sure you hit something and make sure they don't double on you. And then darting stance. So you add... Plus 6, plus 4, plus 3. So you add 13. Wait, what? Uh, 6, 4, yeah, plus 13. So you reach 42 speed. Interesting. But yeah, baked. Oh yeah, you have that. So you basically go into the bold fighter, guaranteed yeah. double, and then you set up your enemy phase with 49 effective speed after speed smoke. Right. But I think what really helps the set is the Ignis, because Ignis won't proc on the player phase, but he'll have it ready for the enemy phase. So he just one shot something, hopefully. You're right. Wait. Oh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. You wouldn't really need a second attack, but I see what you mean. Yeah. You should just nuke them. Right, that's really impressive because yeah. you come with 43, 43 defense and then you have 43 speed. 42 speed. Isn't that 46? Because of the oh, speed spell, faithful yeah. axe. Oh, Here's the thing with the Faithful Axe, if you're using Dorcas aggressively, you might not be able to set it up. But then again, he's armor, so it's not exactly like he's going to run that far away, so... Fair enough. But Baked, your personal opinions on Faithful Axe Dorcas. This is impressive and all, but he comes with I one of the best like axes. It. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, do like it too. He's a really good axe. Hack, Hack, uh, Hack Lantern is better for normal sets, but for speeds that I do think Faithful Axe is better, because he benefits from the defense, the speed, and the attack. Mm -hmm. This is the first time ever I've seen a dual phase Dorcas, and this actually works so. Oh yeah, Fear Four. Of course you do. But this it works, works so well. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> wait, could you not get Fury? Four? No, wait, you could get Fury Four before. Yeah, yeah. You could with uh, the update. Yeah. All right. This is great. This is unexpected, <laughs> and I, I want it to be known. For who? Who was it? Whoever did the speed sorter, Za, fuck you, Za. And whoever did the speed Arden, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I believe Arden did the Arden. Uh, fuck you, too, Arden. But yeah, good, good job. I like this one. Considering unexpected, here's your number one. Rebreds Olivia. Re. <laughs> it's rye bread. Uh, same thing. You can, can you not read? Okay, and tomato, tomato. Uh, okay, you can't give me the can't read thing because you can't read like a hundred percent of the words. Hundred percent of the words. Okay, but thanks. All right, cool. We got it. The rye bread. I mean the rebread for amps. Yeah, rebread. Okay, I, I'm sorry. The glasses are perfect. The glasses make everything better. Um, looking fine, Olivia. Uh, I believe that's Freed's weapon, and hot. Flex attack minus 7 on foes on enemy t team with the highest attack through its next action. That's pretty damn useful. Uh, anyways, sorry, we'll start properly. Blushing Beauty, Olivia, 40 plus 10, 6 flowers, 47 HP, 50 attack, 41 speed, 32 defense, 31 res. Attack Olivia. Usually I speed see speed Olivia, but uh, most Olivias I saw were made in the first year of the game where speed was king. Nowadays, everyone is going for attack, which also makes perfect sense. But yeah, all in all, I see what you're going for. Warding Breath for the faster ethers. She has 41, 50, and at 
tier 20, that's fair enough. Most of the time you will double. Um, Gation drops her attack, Chill Speed drops her speed. So the highest attack hero loses 7 speed. Highest speed hero loses 7. Sorry, highest attack hero loses 7 attack. High speed hero loses 7 speed. Uh, Warding Breath, opponent attack, attack defense bond. So you have 35 res and 37 defense and 55 attack when attacked. Well, really easily to do. And you're you're giving her hone attack for. Nice. Okay. But yeah, go ahead, go ahead, T. Yeah, I mean with this one, it was definitely a pretty clear cut indication that this was going to be my selection for the top, and the guys also agreed. Because this hero right here, you could put her on any team and she would be perfect in almost any mode. Because arena support, she has the chill attack, the chill speed. She can chip a little bit and you can throw the bond on there if you have a bulkier hero that you're trying to chip down for your bonus unit. She also would work great in AA for the support as well because dancers are very, very nice to have when it comes down mm -hmm. to AA. You could throw her PVE. She can act as a dancer. She can act as an, an attacker. She basically can do just about everything you need her to do. And quite frankly, that is a hero right there that I think is more than deserving to be number one for this week. It's an interesting pick because I agree with it. And I like seeing Generation 1 heroes feature because it, it's so much harder for them to keep up in general. But this is pretty, this is pretty, this is pretty cool. And this is a really well committed Olivia. It's just, I never expected. Because we have, we have, I would say at least one super big Olivia lover in our Discord. I would have totally not expected another Olivia to make it here. But yeah, this is, this is, this is really impressive. The commitment here was one five star in Freed. Not, uh, wait, yeah, in Ninja, I mean, sorry. Uh, Warding Breath from um, Ledring Ike. And who has chill speed? Um, P, uh, P, or the Flying Olivia, and uh, who else? Wait, that's, uh, that's Pan well. Pan 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 And I think uh, oh. one of the GHB has it. One as of well. the units has it too, yeah. Pane has it. Oh, and you guys are mentioning yoga as well. Right. Wait, yeah. what? She, she's chill speed. Yeah, I believe she yeah, does. Yeah, she does. I have her. Okay. Yeah, she has kind of everything. Yeah. Ooh. Martial spirit. Okay. But that, that is our Nimdom top 10. Um...